Hey, everybody. How are you? Carol, how are you? From a rainy, windswept Wilshire or Wiltshire. I used to live on Wilshire Court. Uh, sounds really nice. Michael, how are you? From the UK. Nancy, how are you? Ontario, Canada. Robert, good to see you here from Ohio. And Aurora, how are you? Sorry I missed you guys last week. Sandy, with an eye, how are you, Sandy? I see dust flying by. I need to dust my studio here. Michael, good to see you from Germany. How's that castle doing out your window? Sounds really cool. Michelle Lacanto, my favorite last name. Christine from Boston. Awesome. Ismael, how are you? So what I'd like to do for you guys here this morning, I'll tell you a little story. Hi, Aura, uh, before we get started, and a beautiful castle. <laughs> Dana, how are you? From Jack's Creek, Tennessee. Uh, thinking about moving down to South Carolina, and uh, Tennessee is a really second... Uh, I don't know if it's a second choice, but it's a really good choice. David, how are you? Jill from the Island of Man, where those guys go crazy on their motorcycles. Greg, Ham Hamilton, Ontario. And Paris, of course, Jean Philippe. So you could probably pronounce my last name much better than I ever could, Jean. So let, let me give you a little backstory here about what today's class is going to be all about. So I have a, a coach and student, Scott, and he does these really incredible sketches. He, he, he's trying to do these, these paintings that uh, have so much creativity. So I did a critique for him. Hey, sir, my man, uh, yesterday, and I just fell in love with his sketch, and I fell in love with his photo reference. I, I, I don't know where he got his photo reference, but I said to myself, you know what? Um, I can't draw from the photo reference because I don't know where he got it from and I don't want to viol violate anybody's copyright. Uh, so what I want to do here today is just use some of the same techniques that I taught uh, Scott in his coaching video uh, here. And I want to just do that. Uh, I'm going to try to draw from my memory what I think that photo looks like. That's the goal here. And in doing so, I want to share with you these things that I like to call connection lines, where you draw these lines and they connect the eyebrow to the eyebrow, the lashes to the lashes, the nose to the nose, uh, eyebrow to the ear, and everything is just going to be round. So the, the uh, trial that uh, Scott was having with his sketch was looking up uh, at somebody. So you see a little bit of the underneath of their nose, you see a little bit of the underneath of their chin, and it's a little bit of a challenge. So uh, let's get started. So you can see here my ruler is crooked on the video, but it is not crooked in real life. It's going straight up and down. This is the best that I can do with my camera. I'm not looking at any photos. I wish you can come here and, and see my truth that I am speaking. Uh, there is no photo reference up. So when I'm looking at my monitor, what I'm doing is I'm looking right at your comments. Say Sabi from the Philippines, Joseph from Spain. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go down to South Carolina in um, August to really get a feel for the humidity, and that will be the test. So uh, let's get started. L let me start drawing here for you, and I'll try not to get my head into the, the monitor. And let me move this ruler, okay? So, all right, this is the top of my video, so I don't want to go above that, and that is the bottom of my video. So connection lines, okay? So I'm really, how's the sound? Sounds good? Okay, so what I did, uh, I'm just looking at, at what I'm looking at, like I said, just to finish my thought, is your comments, and I can see what I'm drawing here. So I'm, I'm looking at my software that shows me what everything looks like, uh, Cape Cod, Peter, how are you, on um, video. So that's what I'm looking at. I am not looking at any reference. I wish I can take my camera and show you my monitor that I'm not looking at anything, and this is... You know, this is a really good test for me to see where my memory drawing skills are at, because quite frankly, I only really kind of thank you, uh, Michelle. Thank you, Chris. Good, good, good. So let, let's get started. I'm doing too much. I'm too chatty here today. 
So first thing is I'm looking at my monitor and I want to make sure that I have enough room for the top of the head. Good. Okay. So, and <clears throat> yeah, let me go bigger. So let's just draw. So first thing I want to do, and I'll try to my very best to explain as I go, do I have enough room for the shoulders? Yeah, I think I do. So I'm starting uh, outer eyebrow, outer eyebrow. Okay, now I'm starting lash, outer, outer lash to outer lash. Okay, um, I'll make sense of this in a moment. Now I'm going to try my very best to place the bottom of the nose. Okay. And uh, this will be a little bit bigger as I progress. So uh, lash, I'm just going to very quickly focus on two quick eyes there. Okay. And now I want to think about, so I'm trying to remember. So there's drawing out of your imagination where you just draw any head out of your imagination. And then there's drawing from a photo. Uh, but remembering, memory, so trying to remember what that photo looked like. That's what I'm trying to do here. It's such a good exercise for you guys to try. So now I'm trying to remember, gosh, what, how, what was the distance between these lashes and the side of the head, okay? And then I remember that this jawbone was very pronounced. Now, when I'm doing this, I've got to think about symmetry, Okay, bottom of that jaw. See, I got to just relax. Just relax and scribble. Good. So that's my overall shape. Okay, I have my, my la brows seem to be a little too close to the edge. But let's keep going here. So now I want, since we're looking up at somebody... I want from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin to be a little bit longer than, say, the forehead. Why? Because of foreshortenedness, if that's a word. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Um, now, I'm going to just, again, let me just do a little scribble in here because my hand is shaky. So I'm going to just do a little corner to corner of those lips. So upper lip. Now, again, I want to try my very best to be somewhat symmetrical. Now I'm gonna go right to what my memory remembered. So what my memory is telling me is that there was like a little line over here. It's the line that separates the light from the dark on the chin. So this would be the bottom of the mandible. And the bottom of the mandible, hey, El Libro del Cosmos, that's a very cool flowy name. So. Uh, the mandible is going to be curving that way because we're looking up. So I need a bigger jaw. So this would be the mandible, the angle. Good. This would be the jawbone. Now the vertical angle of the jawbone. I'm a little sloppy, but that's okay. So we have now our three angles for the mandible. I, I preach that now so much in every portrait drawing tutorial. So I'm, I'm trying to remember now. So this is the upper lip, lower lip. Lower lip is casting a shadow. Immediately I'm gonna put some shape in. And then this is the chin. And then we're gonna see just a tad of the underneath part here, okay, of the head. Pretty cool. Now, do I have enough room for this? Yes, I do. Okay, good, good, good. So let's cruise this down. That's the underneath, underplane part of the head. And I'm going to just, hi, Marie. I'm just going to cruise in a, looks very funny right now, but let's just kind of get it mapped out. I appreciate that, Waleed. Hi, Ileana. Nice to see you. Um, so let's curve the lip up. So this is the curve line that I like to call the connection line. Okay, there's a little dimple. Go to corner to corner of those lips. Let me resharpen. Awesome. So right now, <clears throat> hey, Craig, how are you, man? 
Um, I'm going to just flow around. Damn, my, why is my hand so shaky? Good. And a little dimple. So we're trying our very best to establish the center. So this dimple is going to establish the center of the lips and a center. Good. Now, what I want to do is just get what I would like to call the nose lobe. So this thing over here, <laughs> just like your ear lobe, I call this a nose lobe. I don't know. I, I know there's a, a, an anatomically correct term for that, but I, I'm going to go with the nose lobe term. So I'm just going to go from where that nose lobe and where that touches, and I'm trying to be very symmetrical, and then the center of the nose. Now that should curve a little bit more. So now I want to get the bridge of that nose, and I'm trying to remember what I saw with Scott's photo reference. So this kind of came on up. This is the ball of the tip of the nose, I'm trying to be symmetrical, and that is our front plane. Yeah, practicing every day uh, is where it's at, and unfortunately, I don't practice every day that much anymore. I wish I did. It, it's no excuses. I'm just an idiot that I don't practice every day. Uh, now, I'm trying to remember. So this is remembering the line that separates the light from the dark. Hi, Aries, Padilla. Padilla. I should have stopped at Aries. Um, now I'm going to flow the line that separates the light from the shadow, and I'm going to put in a little shadow over there. Okay, so this would be a nostril. I don't want to go too crazy with the nostrils, and this nose here, the underplane of the nose needs to be more prominent because we're looking up. Looking up, uh, almost as if you're at the museum and you are looking up at a statue that's up on a, a big pedestal. No, I'm not going to compare it to the original because it's a, I, I, I'm going to take a wild guess that it's a copyrighted photo and I do not want to share that copyrighted photo. I don't know who the photographer was that Scott. He gets these really awesome pictures, so I, I can't use that photo. So this is just more of these techniques for drawing from your memory. Um, okay, now I've got some center stuff happening here, and now let's try our very best to maybe focus in on the brow. So for me, eyebrows are two angles, okay? Two angles, good, and that's, I want to make sure that those eyes are not too low. I'm going to resharpen. Awesome. How are you guys doing? Good? All right. So it doesn't, so I should have mentioned that I'm trying to make a female. Uh, okay. But right now we're looking very masculine uh, with this. Absolutely. Leonardo uh, da Vinci drew stuff from his imagination as well as from life, both. So, it's my philosophy, and do I practice this every day? No, I do not, but it's, it's my philosophy that every artist needs to draw from life, from photos, and from one's imagination. Or instead of using the phrase imagination, you can say from your memory, trying to remember what you looked at. And quite frankly, that's how I learned how to draw from my imagination, by remembering, trying to remember the pose, okay? So now let me um, focus a little bit. So this is our lash line. So always, always is a powerful word, but always try to connect your lashes. The lid line. I want to make sure that I don't make these eyes too big. So whenever you feel as though that your eyes are too big, it, it, it tends, or let me rephrase that sentence. If you feel like your drawings look too cartoony, it's usually because the eyes are too big. Big eyes have the tendency to look very, very cartoony. Hi, Ruka. Okay, so let's keep going here. So I'm going very light. I'm going to raise this brow. So you guys can see my eyes. My camera is right there. I'm pointing at my camera. 
and right next to my camera are my comments and right next to my comments is the video of what you are looking at so I can make sure that I'm drawing on the screen. Okay, so I'm really not looking anywhere. Usually my reference is right in front of me and I'm not looking there. So you really wanna follow my eyes because uh, I, I, I really wanna be true to you. I, I, I don't want you to think that I'm looking at some photo. I, I really want you guys to understand that you could do this with these connection lines. So connect. Wrap around and just eye socket shape. Connect. Okay. Now what I, I am going to determine from the photo is that the light was coming from up above slightly to from the left. Okay, so whoever the photographer was who photographed this um, did a great job with the form light. So I'm going to put a little shadow there. Aries, I can vision my character from imagination, but having a hard time executing it. Sometimes I can't hold the image in my brain. Okay, so th it's, it's important that uh, I, I, a student many, many years ago, I mean, this was over 10 years ago, well over 10 years ago, uh, gave me this, she didn't give it to me, she recommended that I buy this book, and it's called Speed Reading by Tony Buzan, B-U-Z-A-N, I think. I think I might still have it on my shelf, I don't know. I, I didn't even read the whole book, but um, and I never became a speed reader, but there was part of the book that um, made you memorize three numbers, like there were three pages, you have to look at the three numbers and memorize them. And then the next chapter, it was four numbers, and you memorize the four numbers like dozens and dozens of nu numbers, and you just try to remember those numbers. And uh, I, I was like, whoa, I, this is kind of interesting. Maybe I could draw the figure from life and just try to memorize the negative space, or I could memorize what a body, the torso looked like, and then on the train ride home, I would try to draw that torso or the negative space. That's how I'd start my memory drawing. So what you have to do is, if you want to draw from your memory, it's very different than your imagination. Let's make sure that we can get those two correct. Your memory is you stare at something for a while and then you try to duplicate that, okay? So I did stare at the photo when I was doing the video critique for Scott and I also stared at the photo uh, before I, 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 I'm filming here today. Um, okay, yeah. I'll show you a couple smaller drawings. So right now, I can honestly say that I'm kind of deviating from what this model looked like because right now I have more of like a statuesque face. But let, let's keep going. Let, let's see uh, if we can make it a little bit more playful uh, by adding some hair. All right, so now um, I'm kind of going to just go straight up and down with my pencil stroke direction. For those eyes, just a little bit of shape. And maybe... I should get in the line that separates. How did that look? And I'm going to very quickly here with an up and down pencil stroke direction, get in my shadow side. Up and down is very quick. I, should, I shouldn't be concerned with this. Is this eraser dried out a little bit? Should not be concerned with this, but let's just keep it soft. Scott. Okay. Okay, so I don't, yeah, I don't want to, all right, good. I'm glad that you said that, but I don't want to abuse his copyright. He might get really angry. Hi, Susan. And um, now let's shade this side. So there are specific things that I remember from Scott's photo reference. And again, I, I'm going for the overall head. I'm not going to copy it exactly uh, from what I can remember. I do remember like a slice of hair coming on down over here. But I, I, I want to make this. So I'm taking a little bit from the photo. And I'm also trying to do a little bit of my own thing. Because I'm really trying to make this feel like a statue that we're looking up at okay because i love now the ears so l let's talk about this top of the eyebrows top of the ear 
So that needs to curve around when we are looking at it from up above. So you do this motion over and over and over again. I can erase out those lines on the forehead after. Okay, now the ear lobe, I'm just gonna hint. Probably I think could be lower, but let's just hint at it for now. That ear would be in shadow, awesome. Okay, now this hairline may be a little bit higher. Let's use some organic lines. Am I going off the monitor? No, not yet. Okay, cheekbone. Let me resharpen. Awesome. So I'm just looking at, by the way, thanks for the email suggestion, the suggesting the book focus yeah great book i love that book yeah so what uh, so if i can how can i slide this over without disrupting everything here uh, let me try so scribbling is something that is so so very important you see the scribble over there now for some reason when i do these live streams i don't know what my problem is but i tend to get like a little edgy a little nervous why i don't know it's human nature maybe for me because uh, i want to do good for you guys so my hands always get like a little shaky and so the way that you get the shake out is you scribble okay so i scribble just right over here see what i'm doing scribbling and this is how i draw the figure more so Oh, let's make a nice thick neck than a portrait. Now, this portrait, how big is it? This is big for me. So from neck to top of hair is almost eight inches, right? Um, so I, I let's go with a very strong, powerful, statuesque neck. Flowy. Now, I remember on the photo that the cast shadow came around around the neck and this front plane of the neck was slightly darker than the under plane of the chin and we're just going to kind of flow up right here good and i think i want to make this jawbone come out a wee bit more to use is a wee bit more an English term. So from the UK, from the United Kingdom, I'm trying to be. So use light connecting lines in portraits, whether from absolutely from life. I do this even more than from a photo. OK, so these connecting lines, like I said, from eyebrow to eyebrow connect to the eyebrows usually top of the ear um, now let me just I'm trying to figure out how I want this hair I, like I said I want it to be I should lower this whole thing um, hold on guys I just got to move uh, a couple pieces of tape because now I'm a little too high blue tape let's move this drawing down Scottish ooh I do have a very small percentage of Scottish in my blood. Okay, so I'm just resetting my paper. Blue tape is my best friend. Now, here's my ruler. It's tilted. Okay, awesome. So let's, um, let's be scribbly. And also a big part of this live stream is flowiness. So this is where I'm going to deviate from um, Scott's photo reference. I'm kind of doing a different hairstyle thingy. So how is the hair flowing? Telmo, love you too, brother. Let's put some shape in. Now I'm drawing on a diagonal. This is going to get all smudged. Anyone else's connection breaking up buffering? 
Okay. Well, that stinks. Okay, let me resharpen. Let, let, let's dive into the eyes. Now, uh, same thing, uh, guys. Lashes to lashes. Eyelid line to eyelid line. Now, you have to, when you're drawing portraits, I know Craig would know this, uh, when you are drawing portraits, you always want to look at the edge of the eyelash to the edge of the face, okay? And, um, okay, good, 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 good. Thank you guys for letting me know that. Okay, good. Um, because, it, 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 again, if you ask yourself the questions, I can't draw realistic. Why do my portraits look cartoony? What's the deal? What am I doing wrong? It's because your eyes are too big and your eyes are too close to the side of your head um, on your drawing. So now we're looking up. Let's draw both eyes simultaneously. But do you see how I drew the eyes first just with a ghost-like impression? And now I can come on in. And I want wider eyes a little bit. Let's indicate a pupil. So she's going to be looking up, very statuesque. So looking up. And let's push. Okay. Yeah, that might help. Let's push the lash. Lashes should be thick, but I'm not doing lashes that are kind of going up like that. I'm kind of focusing more on the thickness at corner to corner. Eyelid line. Eyelid line. I'm looking at your comments here. Awesome. Now, when you're looking at somebody's eyes from um, up from below, this lower eyelid should curve this way a little bit for a small section, and then it'll curve up. So I've got some adjusting to do here. Just trying to get those eyes somewhat symmetrical. Good. And let's tilt this down. This should not be as thick as the lashes. And now we can kind of curve up. This eye is too big. So let me live with that for a minute before I start mucking it up. I could make, let me resharpen. So right now, her left eye, the right one, is a little bit bigger than the other one. Well, I don't know about magic. I'm trying. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going here. I appreciate those kind words, uh, Craig. Now I'm going to go a little... This is the underplane of the brow bone. And uh, Craig knows about brow bone because we were talking a little bit about that in some coaching um, sessions. So we have to be careful that we don't draw uh, all of our portraits like a crow magnon man um, with a really strong brow. So right now, I want her eyes to be looking a little bit more. Ah, let's move over the pupil. Cool. So underplane a little bit and underplane I know it needs to happen that eye needs to come up so first time with the eraser I can't believe I'm using the eraser this sucks okay scribble loosen up come on in curve so I'm trying I don't know how successful I am I'm trying I try to do these every Saturday, these live streams. That's the goal. Uh, last week was the first one I missed in eight weeks because I had a prior commitment before that disgusting word called COVID. I committed to something on the weekend and then it got pushed back 
until New York opened. And so I, I had to deal with that last Saturday. Appreciate that, Michelle. Okay, now let's let's keep going here. Let me not get stuck. And let's curve. Let's let's leave the eyes and let's move on to the nose. So this would be our nose lobe area, our nostril area. Center of the nose here is where that line that separates light from the dark was. I want to move the nostrils a little further apart. Uh, I'm not a big nostril person, so I, if I could de-emphasize the nostrils, I most certainly will. A side plane of the nose. Okay, so let's not get stuck. Let's go corner to corner of the mouth. The mouth is really cool on Scott's photo reference. Love it. And let's go back to this upper lip. Shade. Solid shape. Good, 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 good. You know, this morning when I woke up, Oh my God, I was like dizzy. My sinuses are going crazy. And I'm like, oh my God, I got to do live stream today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some some teachers, uh, they have their process of what they do. And um, their process is something that they do in the studio. And they're very comfortable with that. And trying to draw in the classroom is an uncomfortable thing sometimes. I've been in the classroom so much that um, the classroom, I feel like it's my home away from home, room 1002F at the School of Visual Arts. I just wish I had that place as like my studio <laughs> forever. It's like the best room in the school. Oh, that's why you were not. Yeah, I, I had um, committed to uh, an obligation before COVID and they changed it to a Saturday. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I got to do this. So l let's um, let me lean back and, and reassess here. Her eyebrows are way too close together. Let's focus on the hair just a little bit uh, with shape. So a little bit of shape here. It's going to cover the ear. I love these like wispy things. It just makes it so much more fun. There's uh, one of my favorite uh, sculptors. I did. I drew one of his sculptures uh, here on the live stream. Um, August St. Gaudens, I do believe. I'm so bad with my art history and names. Let's just scribble. And let's use the eraser to get rid of this line on the forehead. Okay, so... The goal, when you photograph somebody, be very aware of where you are in relationship to their head. So looking at somebody from be below makes them feel a little bit more statuesque, like we're looking up at them in the museum and uh, love that. Okay, so I should do some shoulder tops because I preach that all the time in the coaching videos. So I... I you never want to draw a floating head. Collarbone. So give her a nice long neck. Female clavicles are usually tilted down. Males are not. Now center. So this clavicle needs to be moved over. Pit of the neck. I know you can probably barely see that, so let me just leave that. Okay, so let's keep going here. Um, you're saying from memory, but I'm getting the feeling that a lot of this is muscle memory from drawing so many portraits. Yeah, absolutely. I, what I'll do towards the end of this, Troy, is I'll draw two little heads um, from imagination uh, to show you. And that's exactly what I did in Scott's uh, coaching video. I just showed him a couple of heads uh, looking up and looking down. Very, very small, very, very simple. And um, I'll show you that towards the end. Let me try to push this a, a wee bit more here. So let's adjust. Thank you, KDN85. Love it. Okay, so mandible turning over here. Jaw. 
Let's make a more prominent jaw. I love that. Good bone structure. You can do whatever you want on your drawings from memory. Good. So this would be our model in factor C where I'm drawing my pencil stroke with the lay of the land. Yeah, scribbling is, is awesome. So this is just gonna flow in. And let's go darker here. And a little bit with some pencil stroke direction with those lips. Now I, I need to work on the eyes a little bit more. I'm gonna create like a little dimple in the center of the lips. That's always fun. This is gonna curve. Or am I symmetrical? Mm, oh, yes and no. A little dimple over here. Dimple. Curve around with the chin. Let's go to this focus part of the nose and shade more here. We have the nose lobe. Let's shade. Oh, sorry. I didn't see that. Yes, color erase pencil. Takes a little bit longer to shade with the color race, no doubt. Let's go up this front plane of her nose. The tip of the nose is going to be a ball shape. I have it a little bit more too much of a V. Let me use a kneaded eraser. Let me use this eraser on this little color race because this one is soft. Is it? No, it's not. Let's use this. So I want this nose to be a little rounder and shade, shade, shade. One of the things I preach all the time, solid shapes all the way up. Let's focus now on this shadow shape underneath her eyebrow. And I think what we need to do is focus more on her eyebrows eyes is really what I meant to say. Okay, little side plane shadow. And shadow over here. This was so fun. Um, so this is going to curve. Let's just shade that and incorporate our model in factors. I don't want to turn it too much into a full blown shading style piece. I want it to stay loose. Okay, let me resharpen. Let's deal with these eyes. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to smudge the whole thing with my hand. It's all good. I'm sorry that I'm blocking it and my head's in the way. Gosh, all right. I got to just re lean back. Pupil to pupil. Let's open her eyes. I went, I was really heavy handed with the left side. So let me grab this little guy. Cool. Just open that eye up a touch. Yeah, this right here would be our, I, I don't use the word terminator. I use my own language and that language would be, this is my line that separates and this is my dark half tone right over here. I don't want to go too crazy with that. Um, but yes, you're absolutely right. So I lid line. I got to be careful. Let me look at this from far away. Are her eyes getting too close to the side of her head? Hmm. Lid line. Sorry for blocking, guys. Sometimes I need to curve like that with my arm. Yeah, that, this is a great little eraser. And what did I just do with the eraser? Oh, threw it in my little storage bin here. Yep, love it. I like the smaller one. Okay, let's balance her, her eyes. So we have to focus on the lid line here. So your eyelid line, your fold of skin should be less dark and less thick than the lashes. 
the lashes. Notice how, again, I'm not doing the vertical strokes for the lashes. There was a cast shadow that came down from the hair. Oh, that eraser, it's like from the Stone Age, it's so dried out. Let's go a little darker. Keep your pencil on the paper for as long as you possibly can. Now let's shade this eye. Let's work on the lower eyelid. Normally what I say is don't do too much with the lower eyelids, especially on a female. But with this one, I don't really care. I just want to have some fun here and push it. I'm trying to get these eyes symmetrical. Now, they're not symmetrical because they're not shaded the same value. So as soon as we do that, that helps. Oh, yeah, absolutely, Dana. So I will take a lot of, I will not copy everything. If I'm doing a portrait commission, which I haven't done in years, but if I was to do that again, uh, you have to eliminate a lot of information because people um, have an idea of what they think they look like, but they don't really look that way um, in real life. So uh, the more you copy the photo exactly, uh, maybe that's not the best idea on a portrait commission. Uh, maybe if you're doing a, a, a portrait of a young person, obviously, yeah, they're going to look youthful. But if you're doing a portrait of an older person, maybe you want to eliminate some information. So trying to remember what this looked like. Hmm. Yeah, I cut the eraser with a razor blade. Uh, be and when you buy this Mono Zero eraser, it's everywhere. It's on Amazon. What I did was I cut off the, the clip. Uh, do I have the other one? See how this one has a clip? That clip, when you use the eraser, rotates. It's the most annoying thing in the world. So I just took an eraser and cut the clip off. And uh, not an eraser. I took a razor blade <laughs> and cut the clip off so it doesn't rotate. And then I use a razor blade to slice. And you can see that I've sliced both. Okay, hopefully you can see it to make a point. And it, it just is very helpful. Okay, let's keep going here. So now let, let's, let me get rid of these um, lines. And let's clean up the brow. So I can honestly say it's not really the structure of her head is, is looking like the photo, but um, maybe not the likeness. So now I'm going to just try to work the whole drawing. Good. Make sure that jawbone is symmetrical. That's so, so very important. Just made it non-symmetrical somehow, some way. Let's do this. Soften that. I'm just looking at the comments. Oh, 
Okay, so let's put some value in the hair. Tristan Vale. Thanks, man. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. So I'm just going to shade. Shape is important. Let's get the bottom of her ear. I'm trying to think of statues also at the Met from the 1800s, what type of hair they had. Use that hair to kind of frame her out. This side, her ear would be just a value. Let's clean this up. <laughs> no. no, don't say that. Jeez. Uh, your Jorans uh, do not have shark eyes. Not at all. Okay, let's see. Okay, flow. And flow. Shade, because this surface plane of her hair would be in shadow. Shade and flow. This side of her hair would be lighter. Maybe we can throw in some loose strands. Okay, wispiness, love that. Don't want to overdo. Tone. Something about this that I don't like. I see. I need to put some shade in on her forehead, too, because her forehead's going to roll around into the shadow. Thanks, Gabriella. Okay, so let's shade. So now, what else do I always repeat myself? Because I'm such a repeater. I, I got to come up with some new things to say. I, I repeat myself all the time. And what do I repeat to all of the students in, in my classroom as well as at DTO? Three values. So in this particular case, it's not going to be a full-blown tonal drawing. Uh, it's, I want it to be a little bit more linear. But maybe my line could be the dark value. Gosh, darn it. Okay, let's make that jawbone more symmetrical. I had it, and then I screwed it up. My dog is going to come. My wife is leaving, so that means the dog does not want to be alone, so she's going to be crying at my door any second. Okay, let's see. So let, let's go back to the eyes. Resharpen. And I like the eyes further apart. It just, you know, what I really like are, the, like I said, I'm sorry for, be, for repeating, but those statues from Auguste St. Gaudens are just the best. Um, and... Scott, you really inspired me with that one. It was really good. Um, the, the statues are just so stately uh, when you look at them, like really uh, his sculptures specifically are very stately. So now, I, again, I want to connect. That eyebrow is way too thick. There should be a top plane there. The eyes shouldn't be white, the white of the eyes. So we can get rid of that a little bit over here. And nobody's eyes are really balanced 100%. 
let's kick over her. Yeah, that helps. Okay, now let's go thicker. Gosh, I'm trying not to get my head in the camera. This is hard. Um, let me hear it. I, I really always need such a um, sharp pencil. Uh, the paper that I'm using, it's very, I use generic stuff. Oh God, sorry, sorry, sorry. I use this. It's just a 11 by 14 pad and it is um, fairly empty. That's what I wrote on it. It's Strathmore drawn paper, 11 by 14, 80 pounds. And it is the 400 series. And it's convenient because it's, it's everywhere in pretty much in every art supply store. Uh, just broke my pencil. Get those ears. I don't think they're that low. Good. Okay, I remember specifically on the photo, there was like a shadow shape over here that kind of looked like that. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it looked like. Oh yeah, I love drawing the paintings of the old masters. I, I, yeah. So I have a couple in the live streams here on YouTube with, uh, I'd consider John Singer Sargent an old master, but yeah, I love doing that. Let's sharpen this up. This eye in the photo was darker. Let me resharpen. I apologize because I just, I got to have a sharp pencil. I don't know what my problem is. Um, so if we're looking up, I could have been a little bit. Try to be cleaner. We're looking up, the pupil needs to be up. Darker over here. Let's focus on cleaning up. This is just a shape uh, with the lashes. Now I wanna take this little mono zero. I shouldn't be fussing with this, but I want, just wanna clean it up. That's not light, but I wanted to make sure that I showed the lid line and then the lash line, because they're very different. This would be Straight up and down pencil stroke would be better. Side plane of the head over here. Let's connect with our line that separates. Good. That's kind of cool. Now cast shadow that her hair is casting. Hey, Paul. Yeah, good for you. I'm so I'm I can't wait to see your work on um Tuesday. Yeah, this is at a 45 degree angle my my pad. Let me just look at my screen. So let's go darker here. Go over, this is great practice. Go over the line that you already drew. Go over the line that you already have drawn on the paper to make it thicker and more bold. Go over the line that you've already drawn. Great practice. Let's not make this line so dark. This needs to be erased out. 
And let's, she needs a little bit more width. Go over the line that you've already drawn to thicken it up. Hair is soft. Go over the line multiple times. Just scribble. Cool. Okay, let's do that over here now. Yeah, so Lawrence, I have a book of his in my studio. I love it. Oh, God, it is an hour? Oh, wow. All right, well, I'll, I'm going to go for a little while longer. If you feel that you've had enough, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to go as long as I possibly can. I, I want to work on this a little bit more for you guys. Yeah, so if, if you've had enough and it's a sad, we, we haven't had rain here in a month, okay? And uh, it's, I, I love my house and the landscaping and I take care of it and everything is burning because we've had no water. So I'm out there watering stuff. So we're supposed to get a thunderstorm today. I cannot wait. I'm literally going to stare out the window at, or maybe sit in the backyard underneath um, a little canopy while it's downpouring. Uh, a summer thunderstorm. I cannot wait for that. Okay, so I'm just looking. Thank you. Okay, I'll do my best. Let me resharpen. So when I started, this pencil was brand new. It's getting a little shorter. I go through these pencils very quickly. So I want this ear to be dark and I want this wispiness. I need to get this side of her hair to look the same as the other side. So go over these lines, scribble. So everybody, all there's so many wonderful teachers. Awesome. Thank you guys. I really appreciate all of your comments. I'll definitely keep going. Uh, there's so many wonderful teachers. Like it, it, I, I don't watch other teachers on YouTube, but when I do coaching with people, we chat and they tell me some things that they've learned on YouTube from other teachers and uh, they ask my opinion and, and they ask me to kind of explain further. And there's so many great people. The teachers on YouTube are incredible, but every teacher is gonna have their own thing. And some teachers will teach this technique with the angles and this methodical way of drawing with the angles. And I used to draw that way, and I believe in the angles. This is a color race pencil. I'll put everything in the description. But um, thank you, Aurora. But I've, gra I've kind of graduated from the angles. Um, appreciate that, Craig. I, I've kind of graduated from the angles, and I, I like to do this kind of scribbly thing and the angles are very important and I think it's one of the most important techniques that you can learn is to draw with the angles at first so I'm just trying to be very mooka esque with this Oh, yeah, that sounds great. I would love to live in Arizona. Oh, my God. I've gone to multiple seminars for how to run an online business in Arizona. And just staying in the hotel was such a treat. You know, looking out at, at the landscape. Okay, let's give her a little center line. Now, I think I need to push the nose and push the eyes. I'm just trying to get the whole head. Something doesn't feel right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's there's some really, oh my God, the talent is nuts with people, painters and all different teachers online. Um, okay, so let's give her a highlight. We're circling that highlight. 
let's give her a thicker lower lid over here let's make sure we don't make her eyes too close I'm looking at all of your comments thank you ah from New York Michelle cool okay let's use this little tiny eraser just for fun Pull out the highlight. Let's see if that works. A little bit. Not so much. Now, let's soften. I'm going to cheat. I'm using my finger. And let's not make that so perfectly round. Now, this one needs to be balanced with it. So balance means value as well as the actual drawing itself. Curve around with some form lines over here because the lower eyelid, hopefully you guys can see that. Get rid of the white paper. No worries, Dana. Uh, let's establish the lid line. I usually like to keep the light area light. I'm just going to put a suggestion of the bottom of the cheekbone. I, yeah, I love the brush. Uh, right now, if you look at the side of my hand, the side of my hand is the brush. <laughs> Smudging everything here. Um, I just don't know if this jaw is symmetrical. It's driving me crazy. I had it. Let's go a little darker. Straight up and down pencil stroke, just like this, trying to shade in a very solid sort of way. My hand is doing all the smudging today. And the, we have an underplane that has reflected light, but you don't want to make that reflected light as light as the light. So let's just make this. Um, now I'm scribbling. I, I've abandoned the straight up and down pencil stroke and now I'm just kind of scribbling uh, right now what I'm doing is the edge line for me is the bold line because I'm drawing a little bit more stylized here today just for fun usually if I'm drawing from um, um, my memory I'm gonna be a little stylized so this is just a formula the line that separates the light from the dark Yeah, Scott, I mean, um, it's, it's shapes. It's, it's shapes. Anna G. Hey, Anna G. Is that Anna Garivola from St. Petersburg? One of my first coaching students that I used to coach at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and we used to draw statues together. Okay, let's do some details with this nose. I'm curious if that is Anna G. Garivola. I don't even know if I'm saying it correct. So um, get where the nose touches the face. Not too dark there. Go very light. So you asked about lines. No, Anna. Oh, Anna. Oh, my God. You special person. How are you, Anna? I miss your class already. You guys were the best, and you came back to visit um, last semester. Now I'm not allowed to have visitors when we start to teach again. That was my instruction by the college. No visitors. The class has to stay to no more than 15 people, so I'm going to miss you. And um, 
California as well. So I'm not going to go super dark here with these nostrils because in my opinion, I don't want to draw your attention to the nostrils. I'd rather you look into this person's eyes and not the nostrils. So you don't have to match values and nice. Thank you, Anna. Um, thank you, Aurora. So let's um, put a little bit. I'm trying to figure out if I should kick in some eyelashes. I kind of don't want to do that. Yeah, I miss you guys so much. Maybe I'll see you in fourth year of college. I'm going to see you before then. I know we're not going to have this um, COVID thing forever, but um, you can visit once all this is over and we get back to normal. And of course, you're going to try to bring California so I can see her draw with yellow magic markers. <laughs> Yellow and pink is the color of California's sketchbook. Curve. Now, I, I, this does not look like the model, but I'm cool with that. Flavio, very cool name. Now, this should be a convex that starts to roll in and go to the collarbones. But yeah, we'll just suggest it. Sternomastoids. Hi, David. Okay, and then little pit of the neck. You guys can't even see this barely, so let me not go crazy. Form lines. Form lines. Let's put some form lines in to curve her and get rid of the flat spaces. All right, where am I going to go next here? Let's give her um, a top plane on her eyelids, specifically this one. So I, I'm just sharpening my eraser. Little top plane. Let's give her a highlight. Where am I going to do this? Let's do it right here. That's not doing anything. It's starting to work now. Let me reshape the eraser to get a clean part of it. Sorry for blocking the drawing. Let's. Let's go top plane. Let's give her a tear duct. Let's see here. Yeah, thank you, Aries. I really do appreciate you sticking around and watching. Let me resharpen. Let's deal with the lips a little bit. Okay. Uh, let's smudge this eye. Finger, I'm not, I'm being low tech. Now, her eyes, one eye is bigger and one eye is darker. So let's balance that with this aspect. Now, let's talk about eyebrows for a moment. Your eyebrows are, are darker. They're not the same value from left to right or right um, from left. They're darker here because this is where there is more eyebrow hair. Okay, so that is going to be a little bit darker. And then that also rolls into the underplane of your crow magnon bone, Craig, your brow bone. <laughs> and so it's going to get a little darker here. And it's going to get lighter as it goes above the... Um... Wow, midnight in the Philippines. Oh. So let's lighten 
this part of her eyebrow. So over here, this is going to catch some light. A lighter eyebrow here. This side's the shadow side of the head, so we're going to keep that side a little bit darker. Now, yeah, let's kick this out. Quartz Warrior, that is the killer name, man. Thank you. Appreciate you watching, taking the time here to watch. Um, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Let's go darker. Yeah, this is a very important technique with eyebrows. Now, let's go back to the nose. So this is going to attach to the face. That's called an accent. A little hint of the nostril. And then this part of the nose, from what I can remember, is was a cylinder. So you see what I'm doing? I'm outlining these nostrils. You've got to be very careful. This could really distract. So I, yeah, it's already a little distracting. I'm just trying to teach so you guys can see. So now I'm going to just blend the nose into the shadow slash shadow into cast shadow. So it all becomes one. Now I've got some, a lot of smudged pencil on the paper, so that could work to my advantage and we could pull some stuff out with the eraser. Okay, let's focus on this mouth as I work on the nose. So this is going to wrap around. Okay, this has to go wider than the nose. Ah, we got a lot of Filipinos. Cool. I remember when I was in grade school, I had a really awesome Filipino friend, and his name was Nicholas Cam Cam. He was a giant. He was so tall. Very smart, too. Very disciplined, yet probably had really good parents. And uh, I had good parents, too, but, yeah, he was more disciplined than me. <laughs> Okay, let's chisel out this lip corner under plane. This would be what some people like to call the terminator. I don't call it that. At soon, I, I got to reset my eyes. Oh my God, I've got this big light, big light over here hitting me. My eyes are freaking. Well, the reason why I blended with my finger is because I'm being lazy. Uh, <laughs> it's laziness. There's When you're in a teacher's class, like I, I, I made a huge mistake when I was a student. Um, I joined a class, and it was first day of class, and I used to draw with a mechanical pencil, just like this. And I'm drawing uh, from life with a mechanical pencil, and the first thing the teacher said to me, first words out of his mouth, you're holding the pencil wrong. Don't use that pencil ever again in my class. So I immediately canceled the class. I was such a jerk. Like, I should have stayed in that class. So even though a teacher tells you to do something that you may not agree with, while you're in that class, try to be true to it. And then when you leave the class, you can be like, oh, thank God I'm out of that class. I don't want to use that technique. Um, but I think when you're in, like, I wish I would have paid a little bit more attention to what that teacher taught because... Uh, in the end, I think I could have benefited from it a lot. Yeah, this um, it's 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 really important. Let, let's let's pull out some lights. This should not be that dark. Here, it's the light side of the face, and. Where am I going next with this? Let me take the edge off.
Yeah, I didn't. I don't hear her at the at the door. That's funny. She's always comes up. That means somebody else is downstairs. Just trying to clean up some edges. Where am I going next with this? So this lip, you can use some form lines to make it look a little rounder. I want to lower this to make it symmetrical. Dimple over here, soften that out. Use a softer stroke, a dimple over here, soften it out. Use curved strokes. Now that lip is turning into an underplane. It looks a little too stylized. Darn it. Okay, so let's do some curved lines. So this lip has a front plane. So we're going to go with a couple of verticals right there to indicate that front plane. And I'm going to go, the chin should not be as light as the forehead. Right now, I'm being uber stylized with that type of line. Let's turn that chin under. Let's smudge. I don't want to go too dark with the jawbone. So I'm, I'm trying to pull pencil off with my hands. So each week, I, I, I just try to show a different little technique. So rules were meant to be broken, and I'm smudging with my hands. I'm getting oil all over the paper. Would there be more shading on the top left of her hairline? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, my God, now I really am loaded up here. Um, let's try to deal with the hair. Here it would be in shadow if the light is coming from that direction. This would be in shadow. And our hairline needs to be softer and a little bit more complicated. Okay, strands of hair, strands of hair, strands of hair. Draw your hair with the way it's laying on the head. Let's be wispier over here and more flowy. So let's let's build up a dark line. Go over it and go over it again. Keep going over it. This is how you build up dark. The pencil's getting duller. I'm frozen. Oh, that stinks. How's the streaming going, guys? Because I can always pause this and come back. How's the streaming for everybody besides Sandy? Oh, I'm not getting any comments. Maybe I am dead here. Okay, so it, some a couple of people tell me, is the video still clear? Okay. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, perfect. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'll go a little longer here. So Okay, good, good. Good. I just don't like this part of her hair. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm making it up and I don't know where to go with it. Let's uh, make... Okay, thank you, guys. Oh, my God, my eyes are freaking. I got to close my eyes for a second. <laughs> the comments and the light. Oh, okay. Oh, let's... Uh... It's not like I was out partying last night till three o'clock in the morning. 
those days are over, but that's how my eyes feel. Let's just put a little tone over here. You know, sometimes too much tone, it's just going to totally get messed up. Now, let me just push the eyes a little bit more. I, I'm really hesitating to do lash lines. Sandy, what I would do is cut out of YouTube, just get out of your browser, and then come back. Okay, let's go darker. And let's soften. I can't believe I'm doing tone right now. Um, let's use form lines. This is a little bit of a side plane of her head, cheekbone. Form lines on top of tone will help your drawings look more three-dimensional. That's looking a little sloppy, but the goal is to make it look more three-dimensional. Let's just focus on a little bit of this ear. And wisp this out. That's a special drawing technique called wisp this out. So I'm just scribbling, guys. Wisp that out. And sometimes the messier the hair, the more realistic. I'm not using the graphite. I'm using a pencil called a color ace, which is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It's just a colored pencil. Um, where next? Let's go. Let's be stylized. I'm looking at what you guys are looking at. I want to make sure that she's symmetrical. Okay, let's go a little lighter on that side. Let's do that. Good. And the ears I'm just suggesting, nothing crazy. Appreciate that, Aries. And uh, yeah, let's... I know I'm going long. That this pencil, when I used it, was brand new. So we're getting a little bit shorter, not that much. Okay. Let's um, let's just work the whole thing. Let's bring this neck in. Thank you, Sandy. I I'm glad that you're back with us. I'm focusing in on the dark line on the edge. Very stylized. I don't want too perfect of a line over there. We want this muscle to bow out. Awesome. Let's connect. Oh, pencil just broke. You stink. Let's, I'm pressing down really hard for that to happen. So I'm giving the drawing some boldness. I just want, I'm just using one pencil. Yeah, this, um, that in my studio is straight up and down with my video camera, because my video camera is to the left. It has to be crooked. If it was not, if this was straight, then the camera would be where my head is. Okay. Let me just push a little bit more.
get that other head of the SCM muscle. And a little bit more with these eyes. Uh, the, as I say that, uh, let's go back to the nose. And this, I don't want to go detail, but this would be that line that separates. Some people like to call that the terminator. I, I don't call it that. Maybe I'm even wrong about that. Let's just hint at the line that separates. This is the brow. It's going to turn under just a little bit. We don't want to create a unibrow. What can I do here? So now the question is, is uh, when are you done? It depends on your style. I think I need to darken her here. Let's darken this eye just a touch, little details. A little under plane. Solidify the outer edge of that iris. So it's cool. She's looking in the right direction right now. Edward Luis Paez Ventura's Art TV. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you having you here. Just very light on those lower eyelids. I went too dark, so let's pull out. Let's go darker on the other one. So we leave a little bit of a top plane. I'm curving my pencil strokes around, trying to be a little bit more chiseled. Darker there on the inside of the eye socket of the skull. Thank you, Edward. Yeah, uh, 6B for me, I would only ever use a 6B if I'm working ginormous, uh, very, very big on um, to cover a lot of ground. So what do you guys think? You think we're done? I should show you the two heads. That would be really good. Let me just push a touch more. Oh, I see what I don't like. This eye needs to be wider. I'm looking at what you're looking at. And let's pull out. Let's smudge with the lazy finger. <laughs> yeah, I hope that you're doing good, man, Craig. Uh, just kind of do your thing. And like I said, you do not have to stay if you've had enough i'm just kind of just messing around right now thank you t love
Just looking. Thank you, Aries. I, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today. Um, if you have had enough and you have to go, I totally get it. I might stay for a little while longer because I'm into it right now and I just want to make this a little bit more symmetrical. But if you've had enough, yeah, uh, I understand that you have a life and this has been going on. <laughs> I'll give it a, it's an hour and a half. Let's say I give it another five minutes, okay? And then we'll call it a class because an hour and a half is a very long time. Um, and I should not be sitting in a chair for an hour and a half. I should get up soon. Yeah, I'm going to give it five minutes, okay? Let's use the eraser and pull out some lights. Let's curve with the eraser. Let's pull out the light on her eye, lower eyelids. Right here. Now, I haven't used a brush once, and I am not going to use a brush for blending. I'm going to use a brush to brush away some eraser crumbs. Just going over this, making it darker. Repeat, go over. <laughs> That's a good one, Michael. Oh my God, been in my house for five months and not going anywhere because of the quarantine. That's great. I'm very, very fortunate um, that I, I live on Long Island, which is my home is about 70 miles from Manhattan. And uh, it's very country out here. And I'm very fortunate with just being able to go into the backyard I don't like Manuel to go darker with the nostrils because I, sure, I can go darker with the nostrils, but uh, I can maybe make them a little bit more of a middle tone. But my choice always is to leave the nostrils looking a little bit more vague because for me personally, it, I feel as though in a lot of art, the nose takes way too much attention from the eyes. And although, yes, her nostrils could be darker, like to match the rest, perhaps. I'm choosing, I'm making like an artistic decision uh, to let the nostrils be a little bit more light. The phrase that I should be doing um, is I'm trying to make the nostrils less contrasty. So maybe a little bit darker right over there. And I still, you know, I'd rather go lighter. I think going darker over here helped tremendously. It's balancing out. Repeat the line, repeat the line. Have some wispiness everywhere. It 
This is a little dark over here, but I'm cool with that. A little bit darker. Got to be careful with the cast shadow. Thank you for um, hanging out, man. No, never try drawing my own character. I've tried it. I've tried a self-portrait if that's what you mean, but it's been years. I found one that I did in college and it was like double life size. And I know I wasn't smoking anything because I, I didn't smoke anything in college. But man, when I did that double life size portrait, I think subconsciously I was smoking something. Yeah, it's going to be on uh, YouTube. Let's curve. Curve that. That's the eyeball. Cast shadow. Um, yeah, this is the paper I'm using. I know some people have joined us a little late. 400 series, Strathmore. Very generic paper, 80 pounds. Okay. So technically, I think I could keep going with this, but I think we're going to call it a class. And uh, I should just kind of leave it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for uh, hanging out, Telmo. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Put in a little background tone. Just scribbling my hand. It's going over the smudged paper, so it's not too distracting. There's a lot more that I can do with our eyes. There's a lot more that I can do with everything. Now, I promised you guys that I would show you the two heads. Let me do that quickly so I'm not a flake. And let me get a sheet of paper out of here. Um... Okay, one moment. Let me just rip this out. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, the concept here, let me use a little piece of tape to hold this. The concept here is that when you are drawing somebody from below, uh, Everything's going to wrap around, wrap around, wrap around, wrap around, wrap around. Bottom of the chin, jawline. Okay, same thing we just did, right? Um, bottom of the nose, eyebrows wrap around. Your forehead gets smaller. Uh, lips wrap around, eyelashes wrap around. That looks so funny. <laughs> and uh, so eyebrows, ears, eyebrows, ears. That could be like a really fun animated character. Holy Moses. L let's give this person a very skinny neck. Let's not be um, too serious with this. So it's just uh, wrapping around. Wrapping around wrapping around let's give them really angled eyes so that's going to be my little animated character over there even though i'm not a character designer but that was i gotta admit very fun now looking down oh, so silly okay looking down now we're curving the other way so looking up we're curving this way eyelash to eyelash eyebrow to eyebrow 
this way, so ear, um, eyebrow, the other eyebrow lives over there, bottom of the nose, bottom of the ear. So you could, and now mouth wraps around the face that way. How can we turn this person into a character? Let's make this person a tough guy with like a really thick neck. So let's Okay, and uh, so our eyebrows have to curve. So we're curving that way. Let's give him a more of a tough guy nose. Under plane, okay. And then um, curve around. Connect those lashes. Let's give him a chin. Chins always help. Three angles. Angle. That's some serious brow. Oh my God. And now let's just do the side plane of his head. So I, I just want to take a moment here to share this with you, to show you that um, what we did here today. And what we did here today is understand we loop around. Understand that we loop around when we're looking at something from up above. Um, when we're looking at someone down, their ear, if I put a ruler on top of my ear, is my eyebrows lower. So it loops the other way. Just like that. And that's what you want to... Everything are on those those lines okay everything cool let me um let me close this out hopefully this was some good information for you guys i really do appreciate you taking the time to sit with me here today i had a lot of fun with this there's some things i like some things i don't like but we're just gonna uh, one of her eyes is just I, I wanted her eyes to be a little bit more symmetrical uh, one of them, this one feels a little bit too close for me, but I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. Um, I want to thank you guys so much. Uh, David, I appreciate you joining. Um, really nice of you. Troy, uh, thanks for joining. Aries, thank you so much. Kitty, Manuel. Yeah, I've always drawn traditionally. Uh, you can. I have my Instagram page uh, in the description below. Okay, so you can check out that. That's just like a small sampling of my drawings. I literally have thousands and thousands of drawings. I should actually be better than I am since I've done so many drawings. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Thank you, Michael, for joining us. Edward, good to meet you. Jimmy Glick, thank you so much. Love that name, man. That is a killer name, Jimmy Glick. Sabi, Jean Philippe from Paris, of course. You have to record how you would say my last name. It'd probably be like Ashambo, something like that. Um, Gabriella, thank you. Ismael, uh, Marie, thank you so much. Fatima, good to see you. Um, Paul, thanks for joining us, brother. I'm looking forward to seeing your artwork on Tuesday. Greg, thanks for joining us. Aura, Michael, yes, leaving now. We are at a record setting of an hour and 45 minutes. Oh, um, yeah, thank you, Aries. Chuck, thanks, man. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining. I really do appreciate it, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, we're going to close this sucker out. <laughs> thanks, Gene. All right, guys, take care now. An hour and 45 minutes. Be good.